you posted it in uh, Math Squad. Yeah. I did. Um, so we're live. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome morning. to good morning to 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 Sose. Uh, good evening to uh, most of everyone who's west of Sose. <laughs> um, my name's Eric Volgaris, um, and this is Once Upon a Game, a story today, a storytelling variety show. Um, where we play a lot of narrative focused games and games where you get to do cool fictional crazy shit all in one night in about three three and a half hours um tonight uh we're playing a game called downfall by carolyn hobbs and before we get to that uh i want to talk to uh and introduce my my guest today uh so to my left over here on stream is paul so paul uh take it away from me man how are you i'm good my name is Paul. You can find me on the internet under Leafington, where you mostly find me making silly drawings. My latest one, which was a gender bent Widowmaker from Overwatch, uh, which I'll post in the chat for your enjoyment. Nice. All right, and uh, over here to my right, yeah, is uh. Is Sose. So Sose is a new timer on, on the show. So how are you doing, man? I'm uh, I'm alright. I'm tired, but I'm doing good. Yeah. So um, so, yeah. What time is it over there? Uh, it's currently twelve minutes past five. Yeah. Yeah. The dream. Awesome. Luckily, don't have anything to do any time this week. So. Well, picked a picked a good thing to do. So today we're gonna be playing some games. Uh. And not just any games, we're going to be playing story games. And story games are interesting because the most important thing you need to do is be interested in them and be here. Um, these are games that rely more on uh, creative ideas and suggestions as being, for, uh, being put forward by what you think is cool. Um, typically, what's cool is the first thing that pops in your head because what people think is obvious uh, isn't so obvious to other people. Um, and we leverage that for, for some super cool gaming uh, here. But um, just to be clear and safe, uh, the reason why we're able to do all this cool stuff is because we have this little like emergency break or like our parachute in case something goes wrong and we're getting uncomfortable. And that's called the X card. Uh, so if there's anything um, that's like super like, whoa, 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 Paul, Paul, we talked about this. I don't want talking dolphins in this game. <laughs> Right or you know, I mean laugh, but it's happened. Right, um, just just say like Eric. I'm sorry, man. We gotta I I gotta say it. I like we gotta X this out, and uh, we as a group we respect it. And you also don't have to justify it because we respect you as a person, and you won't be saying like I want to X this out without a good reason on your own. So we trust you to that. You don't have to justify it to anybody. Uh, like magic, whatever you are uncomfortable with goes away. Because uh, your your safety uh, goes right along with your fun, so our uh, Paul and and Sose, are we cool with that, man? Are we cool? Yeah, man. It's cool. Yes. Awesome. Okay, cool. So let's let's get started with Downfall. So um, Downfall is how about I just start reading by the story prompt, like sort of like the first page of the book. Uh, it says, and now imagine a sort of like Lord of the Rings, like who's the female narrator from Lord of the Rings? Like imagine that saying this, like our home is breaking. And we have no one to blame but ourselves. We built a flawed society, and soon it will destroy itself. Though most of us can perceive the coming doom, a hero arises to fight against the impending collapse. Downfall is the story of how we try to save our society and ourselves and fail. Boom. So this is a Greek tragedy game where we're going to build a society that looks like a bonfire and then we're going to light it on fire and see what happens. Uh, it's a super fun game. Uh, I had the opportunity to play this with a designer last week. Uh, it's just it's amazing. It's, it's just so much fun. I'm so happy to share it with you guys again. I played it a couple weeks ago online and now I'm super excited to share it with uh, old story game veterans like Paul and newcomers like Sose alike, as well as you viewers. Uh, so I hope you're you're you put on your your fun hats on because uh, put on your fun suits because we're going to the moon today. So um, to play this game, um, the first thing we do is we come up with the flaw uh, of our society. So before we come up with the 
uh, the world or the setting or anything like that, just, just thematically, uh, we need to come up with the flaw, because the flaw is going to be the sort of like problematic thing that, that just, like a problematic weed that just kills the rest of everything. Um, so, uh, in the book, there's some examples of flaws. Uh, we're, we're totally cool to use any of them here. Um, if you also have an idea uh, for one on your own, let me know, and we might be able to work it in here. Um, so examples of flaws could be ambition, uh, classicism, complacency, uh, loyalty, nationalism, perfectionism, uh, pride, racism, selfishness, sexism, and vanity. Um, so we're going to choose this flaw together as a group, and then we're going to discuss what, what that flaw actually means. All right? Yeah, sounds good. So um, what, what should be the flaw at the root of our society, guys? Um, I am kind of interested by um, uh, perfectionism. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I was I was leaning towards uh, doing pride again because I did pride one time, but um, mm -hmm. perfectionism I think goes more into pride. Actually, the the part of pride that I really wanted to highlight. Uh, what about you, Sose? What are you thinking? Perfectionism sounds interesting. Okay, so then what? Uh, as a group, I know this sounds kind of obvious, but like, what does perfectionism kind of mean to you? And like, what what does what does perfectionism represent? Obtaining perfection, but at any cost, almost like you know, you're doing anything to obtain this, you know, ideal yeah. that you almost can't have in a sense because perfectionism is in the itself. pursuit of it. It's the yeah, uh, like, yeah. I have a similar idea. Yeah, like the uh, the unerring pursuit of perfection. So like yeah. basically, um, I actually I played a game of Downfall that was about complacency, and perfectionism is kind of like the opposite. Like mm -hmm. complacency, there's a there's a time when you can just you get to a, like seventy eight percent or whatever, and you're like, eh, fuck it, good enough, right? Like, like it's it's uh you're you're always upset with the status quo, but you're like, ah, oh, but it's good enough that I don't want to change it. Perfectionism, perfectionism is never being okay with the status quo. Mm. Uh, it will always be better, right? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Like, like there there's just no. Um yeah, like the the status quo is not good enough. Uh, anything less than perfect is is always bad. And because like as soon as someone raises the bar for being perfect, then everyone else is not perfect again, right? Yeah. So everybody so has to be better. Yeah. So perfection is is limited to only like a certain person to you. Can the society be perfect? Mm. Ooh, that's interesting. You don't have to answer. Uh, that. <laughs> I I think it can be. It can strive to be very utopian, sure. Okay. So I mean, this is the one that we we agreed on. So like, I feel like we're 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 circling around a similar definition. So I think we're ready to move on. So yeah, I I, I think. Uh, yeah. I think for me it's more about personal perfectionism more than like creating the utopia. Okay. Individual uh, perfectionism? perfectionism? Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, the next thing we do uh, after after we, we talk and create our, our flaw is that we're going to start coming up with elements of our setting which is sort of like the, the background sort of like palette that that like Bob Ross is going to use to paint the landscape of this. All right, um, so elements are just going to be inspiration uh, things. They don't have to be literal based on the the, the elements in the book. They could be figurative or symbolic of, of certain things. For example, there's the element ink, and I've played games where ink actually was oil uh, in a game. So they don't have to be literal. So. Uh, other examples of elements in the game that we can be choosing from, there's a list here in the book. Uh, there's air, cave, uh, echo, grass, highway, hills, music, noise, uh, rain, smog, swarms, trees, and water. So like very like quintessential elements of like sort of natural or, or man-made stuff. 
So uh, just take a few moments to look over the list, guys, and uh, and then when when someone's ready to share, uh, let me know. Uh, I think I got one. But uh, aren't you like all supposed to pick one? And then yeah, that's why we're doing it silently first. Yeah. All right. Because I remember reading that in the rules. I I, yeah. I read the rules like one time. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Uh, so y you may have to steer me a little bit. Um. Oh, there's a fire right. truck. <laughs> Alright, fire truck is gone. Alright, I have... Um... I have mine. I have my element. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Mm. I'm having trouble picking. The idea is shooting around. No, 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 I got my, I got my own. Okay. So... Uh, let's go with Paul. What is, what is your what is your element? I went with gravity because you said we were going to the moon. <laughs> okay. Um, I was going with empire. I was going with uh, steel or lack of steel. Damn. All right. Interpreted many a way. No, no. This is cool. This is a cool combination. Clearly, we're looking at something like almost like space or something like that. Um, yep. So now we're going to use these three elements, and we're going to start to talk about what our uh, what our physical world, um, and sort of like where our city or quote unquote haven, uh, what it what it exist like how it exists in this world, right? So we're going to spend a few minutes, kind of describing what we think about these elements. Uh, what kind of things they bring to mind, and and sort of what how to, some s certain like rough drafts of what our our world would look like, like where our empire sits, or our, our haven, excuse me. Uh, so, um, I, th I think um, let's see, I think. I think this, this seems like like a burgeoning like space empire. Yeah. I um, thought, um it, it is a, our city like some sort of super construct that is the entire empire? Uh, or is it just part of a large empire? Um it's total it's totally uh I, well, I'm asking you what you're feeling, because you, you... It's, to it's totally subjective, right? And um, I'm thinking... I'm thinking that we should go... I like to go grand scale if we're doing space, because of Empire. I think it's going to be the whole thing. It's a space station. See, we've got steel in there. Oh! This is very... It also sounds quite oh. mil militaristic, in a sense. Yeah. Steel uh, comes across as very strong. You know? Oh, I like that actually. A military like a military space station outpost? Not not so much maybe not so much military, but there's a very strong presence of it about because I don't know, maybe there's some sort of imposing threat, so you've got this I don't know. Shoot. Something. Wow. But um so that's why I thought when I thought steel, I thought you know, militaries and armies and things. And, Mmm. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Uh. No, I, I like that idea. So should it should it are we are we cool with it being in space or should it be on a planet? Um. What sounds more fun? We can do it in space or, or like. Could I have it. Um, I mean, I, I, I like it being in space. It doesn't have to be in like one spot. Like if we do like a large like thing, maybe maybe it's like an like Elysium planet or something like that, where it's like there's a there's like an empire that like sits like in a space station over overseeing a planet. Perhaps we could have um have it be like a like a space dock. So there's like a giant pylon reaching out from the planet to this almost platform. Maybe maybe it's one of those you know bands that circles oh. the entire planet. You know, in the space oh, yeah. dock. Oh, I like that actually. So you can almost have that element of gravity there because mm. 
It's not as prominent. Yeah, a space elevator. Thing. Like a space elevator yeah. meets Halo. Yeah, kind yeah, of thing. yeah, Like a space ring. So, uh, oh, I like that a lot, actually. Wow, that sounds really good. Yeah, I'm feeling that, totally. So, um, is this Earth, or is this like a, a colonized planet? Um, I'm cool with either. I don't... I don't, hmm. I, I don't think it's Earth, and I don't think it's colonized. But there is something about the planet, for sure. Perhaps, perhaps we can bring steel back into it. Perhaps it's not colonized, but it's being mined. It's, oh, it, it is. It's it's in it's in the process of of being colonized or like imperialized. Like uh, like it's a savage world, and and like this ring world kind of like comes there and starts like sending guys to start mining it and stuff. So they're like, sort of like this natural kind of thing. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but. Like, the purpose is not to colonize it. The purpose is to suck it dry of steel. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, Vampire. just take the resources. Awesome. Cool. Definitely. So what do we think the name of our... Or actually, that, that would be later. Um, so I think we just move on after after we, we, we come up with that sort of setting. And we start creating, uh, and to me personally, probably one of my favorite parts of this game. Uh, this is the traditions, uh, the tradition section of the game. We're going to each come up with, first off, a general idea for a tradition uh, based on one of these categories listed in the book. And then we're going to tie that tradition uh, into the flaw and, and express how the flaw sort of has infected the that tradition. All right, and then we're going to rotate, and someone's going to make up a symbol for each of these traditions. And we're going to do that twice for a total of six traditions. And. All right. Do we have ideas? Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do death. It's a great tradition. Everyone has death. Okay, so how does death tie into the perfection uh, flaw? So, I think uh, I think death is like you know y you strive to be better and better and better, and and like I guess like the society has to allow for you know s stuff to be at a level where it's not perfect yet but it will get but it also has like the lower bottom of like this shit is never gonna make it so we cut it off and, and quite literally uh, kill uh, unwanted so they they like a very like serious social darwinism sort of like they don't care <laughs> yeah. about the lower the lower people if you get too sick then you're done. If you get too old, you're done. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna phrase it this way, and I want I want to know what you think of it. So it's like the perfect don't die. <laughs> yeah. So basically, anybody who who's getting to death means that they're not perfect and they deserve to die, in a way. Yeah. Like so, especially like the sick, the destitute, the ill. Um, yeah, exactly, and then like you know, since since it's kind of sci-fi, uh, yeah, I, I would say, supposing yeah. like they have like a, a lifespan enhancing stuff going on, but it's still like yeah. So uh, um, yeah, aren't the closer to perfect for... you are, you are, like the longer you can live, and yeah, the, the happier you are, the, the better you are. Just... Yeah, death is for the weak. Yeah, totally. Oh, okay. I looked at um, family, and thought, what if, you know, every every each new new generation is constantly striving to perfect and outperform the last generations. There's this constant family isn't really so much family and more like like rivalry. Yeah, like constant trying to outdo each other because you want to reach that perfection that status yeah yeah um, so uh, individuals and families yeah in a sense yeah individuals and families 
uh, compete. Yeah, I'm digging that. Um, that's some that can give us some kind of cool like noble house kind of warfare kind of shit. Yeah. Um. <coughs> I think I will go with um I'm gonna go with relationships as mine. Mm -hmm. And uh for my relationships there is a um there's a there's like our, our relationships are are self beneficial. Um, nobody, nobody goes into a relationship altruistically. Um, our society views relationships as sort of like, if they're not helping you, they're a waste of time. So there's all, there's this constant competition between partners to make sure that like one person isn't isn't failing the other person, right? So like all rela relationships strive to be bene uh, individually beneficial but sort of like almost like mutually kind of beneficial. And as soon as somebody uh, no longer does that, either economically or, or gives you any sort of your needs, um, they drop you. Like, yeah. So relationships are- Or, or that's, that's the ideal. Yeah. Strictly beneficial, uh, selfish, I should say. Uh, they're strictly selfishly maintained. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of rotate uh, around. So, Paul, you're going to come up with a symbol for the families. Um, Soze, you're going to come up with a symbol, like a physical symbol or representation for my relationships, and I'm going to come up with a symbol uh, for for uh, the deaths, one from Paul's. Okay. What do you mean? What do you mean? So we basically symbol? all rotate one down, and what I mean by symbols is that uh, a symbol is either like a person, a place, or a thing. Um, it's it's emblematic of of that of the tradition that we just came up with. Um, they can be like sort of like objects, tools, locations. Like for example, for a president, uh, the office, like the Oval Office, is an example of executive power, right? Like that that could be a symbol, or it could be like a tattoo, or like a symbol of marriage is are are the are the wedding rings, right? Like you, we have to come up with like a sort of physical symbol or representation of of our tradition. So what does the um, what does this tradition have like a sort of like physical copy of? All right, and for me it's family. Um, um. I have one for me, if you want me to go. Sure. Um, people, so the sick and the destitute, they're given like when when they're uh when it's like a when they're a lost cause right uh they're given a scrap of paper with a sort of like receipt right and it basically says that the um the the community essentially disowns you and will no longer be responsible for your well-being and you have you've been proven that you are you know like basically a death sentence like you are you are on your own Basically, um, a re receipt to die, or um, basically, like yeah, like here's here's your receipt for the social transaction, right? Like you are no longer welcome in society. You no longer get to benefit. Go die. Uh, I like to think that um, families almost keep them in like a little picture frame. And that's that's the that's the memory you have. You don't want to cling on too much. Ooh. Sounds. Well, Shortcut. yeah. The symbol doesn't have to. Uh, the, the symbols don't have to build on one another. But that's actually a really cool idea. I, I love that. Actually, I like the, I like the idea that family members hold that stuff against each other. Like, oh yeah, I remember when when Grandpa Oaks 
Like, look at this. Look at his receipt. Yeah. Well, maybe it's to look back and be like, look, they failed. They did not achieve the the perfection that we will see. Yeah. It almost is a motivation. Uh, to, okay, like, so it's a. Um, so instead of in, okay, so instead of like a, a family tree where you can chase trace your roots, uh, like they have these family pyramids, where every every member of the family is only there to uplift the next one, um, and, and that's their goal. Like their their the height of perfection should be their child. So, uh, you know, and then the next generation will build a new layer on top of that. Uh, and so, so families are competing to, to like, put forward better, better and better offspring? Um, like, what, how do we represent that? Yeah, no, I, and I, I think, I think, like, the, there's, a, like, this large archive, and me, oh, God, maybe it's, like, a, in in like a like a square and like there's an actual pyramid and there's like you know there's four sides so there's four like large families uh and you can trace like their lineage all the way down but as it goes up it goes like towards the latest member of the family so uh, is this on the ring there the yeah so. so on the ring there's like a statue or like there's like a what is it yeah, so it's like a it's like a statue in in the form of a pyramid, uh, okay. and and it it describes the ideal situation, symbol like as it's uplifting the child to be better than them. So like pushing the young to be to be the perfection yeah, that everyone else young. saw. Exactly. Sense. Yeah. So the okay. So there's a pyramid of ideal in the center of town. Um children are the next layer or the next level yeah. mm -hmm. okay got it cool alright and I have to pick one for what was that? Relationships. relationships yeah what is the symbol for relationships hmm what did you what did you say about relationships can you Re oh Still. sure uh, so relationships um, they're never entered out of love or anything like that they're strictly uh, just like a transaction uh, that they're, they're they're for individuals so they could make sure that they're they're achieving their perfection um, if somebody if somebody is is not helping you anymore you just let them go there, so there's always this sort of like competition between uh, couples to make sure that they're always um, the person benefiting the most out of relationships. Hmm. Perhaps then the way that is symbolized is a lack of uh, religion in society, in a sense, because there's no marriage, there's no, you know, there's no rings, there's nothing like that, there's no weddings, it's just almost a contract in a sense yeah so know. then would they get a contract is that what it is is that the yeah, symbol yeah so you're like you enter into like yeah a mutually or what you perceive to be mutually beneficial so yeah. you sign a contract detailing you know oh man the specifics of your relationship and what the end goal is a, to achieve and then at the end of it the contract is terminated so you never have to see each other again yeah Wow, so like there's like stipulations of of like yeah you you are required to do X Y and Z, otherwise this is like the relationship's null and void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like does it penalty. have a, does it have a, another physical representation like wedding bands? No, it's like it's a literal physical contract that you must yeah, sign. Yeah, like a perhaps okay. a lawyer would be. Yeah, there. exactly. Like a lawyer has to be present to to sign your your contract. Awesome. Cool. So now we can do that again. Um, so th now we get to come up with another category. And then uh, uh, once again, we're going to start kind of filling it out. Um, All right. 
I, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank so someone has one. I got one. Uh, I'm gonna do military. Um, um, do you want me to explain it? Sure. Okay. Um, so for the military, I was thinking that um, they are they are constantly. I think I think the military is a source of pride for our for our haven. Um, it's a sort of like an easy way to gain status, um, and, and more specifically, uh, perfectionism in the military would be the. Um, uh, what did I want to call it? It's sort of like the everybody is striving to be the supreme. Um, uh, what do you call it? Not supreme. I guess supreme commander. Um, so mm-hmm. like the there's a prestigious position of supreme commander in the military, and and that is that is sort of like the organizational perfection is like they're the representative though of the like the well oiled military machine, and so it's an honor to have that title. So um, there's constant sort of like um, like intrigue and everything to become the uh, supreme commander uh, of the armed forces. There's a lot of uh, ambition. Yeah. So there's a lot of jockeying for supreme commander position. But it's unclear how that's actual how the Supreme Commander is actually voted on or determined. <laughs> we'll see. I was thinking, um fashion, because in this ideal society people have almost lost the idea of individuality in fashion, so I think depending on your job or role in society, you almost wear just a plain Uniform, or like a jumpsuit or something. I think it's a very. In your goal to be this perfect society, you've lost sight of your own individuality in a sense. Ooh. Not too much, but yeah. like. So, so you said it was kind of job dependent. Do they wear different so they, colors? Um, Do they fashion... wear like a hat with it? Do they wear a pin that describes yeah. the job? It sounds like fashion is extremely pragmatic. Yeah, and it would almost. It's gotten to the point where. Wearing something other than the you know social norm would be weird, and you would you would almost be you would be you would be strange to like have your own sense of fashion, yeah. which would, in your eyes, mean you're diverting away from this perfectionism. So people have stopped trying to develop new clothes. It's not really a thing that's is done. If you know yeah, what I mean. so it's pragmatic and unoriginal. Yeah. Oh, this is like Starship Troopers society. Like in uh, how in Star Trek, everyone kind of just wears a uniform depending on yeah. You know, they have the yellow jumpsuit or the red jumpsuit, or whatever. Yeah, and that's kinda, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, let's finish off with government. Ooh. Okay. So, how does government tie into the flaw of perfectionism? <coughs> so, ah. uh, the government is led by a singular person. Uh, he's the he's the emperor. Oh, okay. And though he has advisors, he has like absolute power over everything. Uh, and it is his job to not be perfect himself, but to shape the the society to be as perfect as they can. Right? Okay. So the emperor uh, is. So 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 he really sets the standards. What 
perfect this for everyone else. Okay. Uh, I think is his main thing. Uh, I, I want to note that it's definitely not like the supreme commander of the military. Yeah, like, I wanted to ask you, how is that different? Sure. Like he may be like a, a like he the, the the supreme commander may be in like a senate or some shit like that uh, that advise the emperor. Okay. But, yeah, it's it's oh that makes sense. Okay. Perhaps the military is more about trying to enforce perfection onto others. Perhaps that's maybe their jam. I don't. I don't know. Ooh. So they're like more like police. Yeah. It's sorry. like internal, than than his external threats. Perhaps both. I'm yeah, not... like I I think they were there for the eventuality of <laughs> external threats, but there's not that many. Yeah. Perhaps we can create conflict between the two the two leaders because they their idea of perfection perhaps fractures somewhere along the line. Yeah, cool. Sure. Smooth. Oh yeah. I want to call this haven the West Ring. <laughs> Get that reference. Um. Cool. So now we have to come up with just three more symbols. Uh. So this time we're gonna rotate the other way. Uh. So this time I think Paul, you get to do military. Um, I get to do uh, fashion, and uh, so as it gets to do government. All right. Um, yeah. Um. You. You. I got. I know what mine is. Uh. It's color coded. Thank you for for pointing that out. Is that um you're color coded based on uh, class. Or I should say status. Um, your job. Your job determines the color of your fashion uniform. It's strictly a way of finding the manager of a group. That sort of thing. Hmm. Um, so I would say... Uh, if it's like a Roy G. Biv scale of color, uh, managers and everybody... Like, every everybody who's who's garbage is near red and everyone who is super up is near near violet in terms of the color status All right. uh, I think for for uh, military uh, the symbol is the uh, the gun. Uh, the gun? Uh, the... Well, it, it's because if you're not in the military, you're not allowed to have any weapons at all. Ooh. So it's, it's a symbol for the weapon that the military wields, and only the military wields. Oh, uh, okay. And what, are, are these, like, guns with... Are, are they, like, kinetic guns? Are they bullets? Are they, like, laser rifles or something? Uh, let's say they're like, um, Are they like rifles? Or are they a pistol? They're like dominators from uh, that one? Yeah. So they're, they're, they're rifles, but they're, uh, god, what are they called? Like, uh, like mini rail guns. Alright. So they don't shoot explosions, they just accelerate something, like, like oh, okay. really fast. Oh, god. Alright. And what is the symbol for government? What is and the they, symbol oh, of And they no. shoot these, uh, these shoot these steel spikes. Ooh, rail splitters? Yeah, pretty much. Cool. Um, I think the symbol for government is that no one really sees the the top man and his surrounding circle. They're a very almost an exclusive club of that the closest to perfection anyone's really been among society. So there's lots of um, controversy and rumors about them because are they, yeah. do they even really exist? Because no one actually sees them. Messages are just passed to and fro. They live almost on their own in this perhaps grand palace amongst the the city. Oh, okay. So like in so they are, they live in a grand like an elite part of the ring. Yeah, they live in seclusion, but it's yeah. more like heaven than being you know condemned. They are like yeah. in the their own little bubble of existence. Yeah, so they're secluded in the elite part of the ring. Mm. Awesome. 
Yeah, I love that. Super cool. Cultural elite. Yeah. Yeah, feeling that. Okay. Um, the next part is, I believe, the name of our of our haven, of our ring mining uh, military planet. Um, what do we think the name for our haven would be? Hmm. Like the idea of it being, um, like Orboros or something like that. Like the like the snake that eats its tail. Mhm. Mm uh, or it could be something like pyramid or something like that. What is it? We, we can do the, the or or we could just like do the the opposite and call oh. our haven like the ring world hum like humility or something like that. I thought omega sounded. Ooh. It's like the symbol represents quite a lot, in a sense, and yeah. the meaning is like like the end of it. Like it's like the perfection. It's the end. Mm. It's the it's the end goal. Yeah. Oh, I love it. No, that makes perfect sense because yeah, perfectionism yeah, is. Oh, I'm I'm. The more I think about it, the more that's a brilliant yeah, it, idea. I because it's the end. It's the end goal. It's the end justifies the means. Right. It's like it, it's the symbol of that. Mm. Yeah. Totally. Oh yeah. It's um. Paul, what do you think? It's great. Omega. So uh, let's say like yeah yeah like colloquially it's called Omega. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's like uh, um, like planetary ring Omega is is really. Oh cool. yeah, okay. So it's called PR dot Omega. Yeah, and uh, but but everyone just calls it Omega. Yeah. And then, like other rings, like there's uh, like a, a Sigma. Cool. Rolling around, uh, so. Awesome. And so I, I want to get started and go into the uh, character portions, uh, but um, we're getting ready to get up to our hour, our first hour break. Uh, so I think we're going to go to our, our break real quick. But uh, in the meantime, uh, over the course of this game, um, this is the first time someone's actually donated to me uh, by, oh, nice. by Tice. And uh, I wanted to just say to Tice, um, holy crap, you... You gave me money, uh, and and he says, "Here you go, much loves. Thanks for showing me these GMless games." And like, dude, uh, I love I love these games, and I'm just gonna keep making them, uh, whether one person or a million people watch me, uh, because it's such a cool aspect of RPGs mm. that like, you don't always get to see. So I mean, thank you. Like seriously, uh, just just thank you for for that. Um, also, I want to say thank you to the latest follower. Um, let me bring it up. Sorry, I, I missed it when we were talking about it. Uh, Riga or, or Riga, uh, you are also my 200th follower. Uh, so you actually are awesome as well. <laughs> like uh, this, this is kind of just a big moment uh, for me. I had just two two sort of like milestones of, of streaming, I guess. Um, yeah, nice. It's kind of crazy. And and then AP Gaming as well showing up here giving me some sweet sweet awesome uh, hosting action. So thank you all so much. As we go into our break, I just want you to know that you guys mean the world to me. So thank you so so much. So uh, we'll see you uh, back here in about uh, ten minutes. So uh, see you soon while we come up with our characters for for our world our ring world Omega. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> 